So we're here with Rob today, and he's going to talk all about his new gob. I mean, uh, Vermin Army. I know, I'm confused as well. I, I immediately, when you said to talk about an army, I went to grab all my goblins, and then you reminded me this this is sci fi. Yep. And as yet, I can't do an entire army you, of you've goblins. You've not yet got there. No, I mean, I can dream <laughs> and try and convince Ronnie to do it. But no, so I've, I've got the next best thing, in my opinion, which is fairy goblins, which are the Vermin. Yep, that is essentially what they are, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you can tell by the fact that I've taken up almost an entire tabletop that I clearly have a predilection for horde armies, uh, and the Vermin are probably, maybe apart from the Plague, are probably the biggest horde army, unless you want to sacrifice loads of GCPS soldiers. They're probably the one where you most need the numbers of troops. Yeah, you somehow always manage to make us look bad by picking the army that needs the most models to be painted, and yeah. always manage to paint them all well before we've even finished building well, ours. I mean, that's my main intention, is to make everyone else look bad. But no, I mean, I did I did cheat slightly uh, by the fact that I did sort of take part in some of the beta testing and things like that for uh, for Firefight. So I built this army, originally actually as a, as a dead zone strike team, um, and then slowly over a couple of months actually built it up. So it was kind of however many points this is, but basically to give me all the options I could possibly need for a, for a Firefight force. Excellent. And do you have a favourite model out of what you've built and painted so far? That that's actually a really tough one because I like I, I do obviously you've got the things like the the Tunneler, which is a great model, really easy to put together. The Mutant Rat Fiend, which has made the move from Kings of War into space because I'm sure they have you know mutated rats in space as well. But I think actually my my favourite one might be one of the little uh, Vermin troops uh, because what I did I took some of the um, the heads from the Ratkin for Kings of War, they actually mix in quite well. And then did this one guy here just casually shooting up into the sky, hoping for the best, maybe trying to shoot uh, an Enforcer Interceptor down or something like that. So I think, weirdly, he's my favourite just because it's so weird. It's the, it's the great thing about the Ratkin and, in, and Vermin in the same way as Goblins, isn't it? They just have so much character that you can do fun models like that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 mean, I think they're... I guess in my head the the vermin are a bit more menacing than goblins. I think they're not quite as not quite as cheeky. Yeah, not quite as cheeky. They they are more angry, um, but I think yeah you can have a bit of fun with them and do some different things. So yeah, the ratkin heads just because I thought well, I'm gonna have so many spread out that actually some of the weapons. So for example, the no, I can never get it the right way around. This is like when Ronnie calls night crawlers night stalkers or the other <laughs> way around is the night stalkers. I'm going to say the stalkers, the ones that are normally the, the stabby ones. So I use some of the weapons from the, the Ratkin on those just to give them a, a bit more variety as well. But yeah, the, the two kits really combine very yeah. nicely. Yeah, they perfectly match, don't they? Yeah. I'm going to just go through uh, roughly what it is you've 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 got built together all together then. Uh, yeah, I mean, so... Other than just a lot of rats. Yeah, I mean, that that's mainly what it is. I mean, I've got, so, obviously got the tunneler at the back, um... I would quite like to do another tunneler with the extra transport. So at the minute I've only got the one section, but you can extend them to make them carry more rats. And I love the idea in the rules that they kind of erupt up out of the ground and then all the rats spill out. So I don't know if um, for those people who've read First Strike, there's a great bit in that where all the rats start coming out, all the tunnel runners uh, start coming out of the ground as well and start going towards the enemy. Um, so yeah, I probably need to expand that one. But yeah, you've got the tunneler, you've got the mutant rat fiend, You've got three tunnel runners here, uh, the rumbler. Then, obviously, you've got a lot of different crawlers and stalkers, whichever way around they are. Um, like I said, because it's a horde army, I tend to get, run them in uh, like groups of ten, because you can add extra ones. Although they're normally five, you can expand them up to ten. And then you can add terrors to them as well, as like drones. So they're pretty useful, uh, particularly for the, uh, the, the assaulting ones, to kind of give them a bit of extra oomph. I've got lots of nightmares here, the big dudes, uh, with a range of different weapons, kind of from the two-handed drills to the uh, the spitters and another drill there, the heavy drill as well. Um, I've got the new claw pack leader, which is pretty cool, the dead zone one. Uh, and then just a couple of leaders and then some uh, uh, bin rats, as my son calls them, these ones at the front. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I think... I don't think I could run all this at once, so I probably need to perfect it and have a look. And I'm hoping to use this um, at a Northern Kings event that's coming up in July, actually. So I'll probably take, well, uh, yeah, I probably will take Vermin, actually. 
these are the ones I've played the most mm -hmm. with. Yeah, it's always nice having a larger army than you actually need, isn't it? And then you can you can mix it up depending on the scenario, but also it means you, you don't get bored of of playing the same stuff all the time. Yeah, you can you can mix and match. Yeah, exactly, and it and it, and it's absolutely brilliant, obviously, for Dead Zone because I've got so I've got every apart from my brood mother, weirdly, uh, I've got every combination of them you can have. Um, so yeah, it's been really good to play them in Dead Zone as well and try different things with that. But um, yeah, I, th I think it gives me a bit of wiggle room when I realise, OK, well, maybe this isn't quite working. I've got the three leaders now with the pack leader, so I can use some more of the command options. But um, yeah, I, I, I've really enjoyed sort of putting these together. This was actually the first large scale sci-fi army I've ever done. So I've never played any of the other games. Um, so for me, this was really great. And it was a sort of really weird experience to kind of go, oh, wow, hang on, wait a minute, I've painted 40 models here because I'm used to Kings of War, and it's not just one horde. That's almost my entire troops. It feels so, weird not trying to stick them all to one base. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I had to just kind of pop them off all the time. But yeah, <laughs> kind of coming from a background of doing goblins where, uh, you know, a horde of 40 goblins is worth 125 points or something. It was quite refreshing, actually, to come to this and go, oh, I can actually do an army in, well, I mean, a couple of months than the entire year mm -hmm. so uh, yeah i've really enjoyed it and i think uh, kind of working on some new stuff now as well excellent well thank you very much rob my pleasure always happy to talk about rats uh, well more happy to talk about goblins but, i'm sure uh, we'll get you back for some gold goblin talk at some point soon is that a promise uh, absolutely okay good <laughs> i'll come back then in that case cheers